The Bible is true and trustworthy. We can trust the Bible. We have many translations that are reputable translations recognized that are done by many scholars. The manuscript evidence for the Bible is overwhelming. We got over 5,600 manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. We don't have the original topographer, but we got thousands of originals, really close to the original date, and therefore are. If we look at all the translations we have of the Bible from way back when, we got over 24,000 in the New Testament alone. There's a lot of things I can give you on the truth that the Bible is true, but it's a faith matter. You must come to the Bible by faith. You must know the original so we can detect the counterfeits if they don't deceive us. Because all eternity is at stake. If you have the wrong Jesus of what it said, you're wrong for all eternity. But if you have the right Jesus, the true Jesus of biblical revelation, you are right for all eternity. It's a body. There's nothing more important than where your soul is going to spend eternity. It's a vital matters, and people so often just throw that to the side, and they just say, oh, all, all that matters is I believe in Jesus. But when you're talking about Jesus, we're talking theology. He's God. We're talking about the state of God and the of His Word. And where the uh, rubber meets the road is the doctrine of the Trinity. Every single Christian cult, every world religion denies that that's true. That there's one true God who reveals Himself to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. But they're distinct persons. Jesus is not the Father. He is the son of the Father, as it says in the second epistle of John and other places. And a lot of people have a misunderstanding what the doctrine of the Trinity is, because none of us can fully comprehend an infinite God, but we can apprehend, and God gives us these things in His Word. The Bible must harmonize from Genesis to Revelation. There's many people can make the Bible say what they want to by picking a verse out of context and saying, look, we should be rich, or God wants us all healed things of this nature, but when you look at the whole Bible, that's not true. God does heal, but not every time. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no more of them. For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, there's no great faith that if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their words. You see, there are many people who come and preach another Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the scriptures. So you gotta know the true Jesus. And I'm telling you, there's thousands of them. Because Satan is the greatest masquerader. Some people have just enough religious that they're still on the road to hell. Because they got religion and they ain't got Christ. And I'm here today, and where I go on the streets, and where I go out and evangelize, wherever I'm at, I'm proclaiming the true Jesus of Holy Scripture. Not because I'm anybody special, but if it were for the grace of God, they're not go I. I like to challenge people because most people don't know their Bibles. Don't know everything else about sports scores and the latest TV jump and everything else, but they don't know their Bible. And your very soul and your friends and your loved ones' souls determine what you know about the Bible and you can communicate the truth to them. This is a serious matter, my friends. Because if you step into eternity without the true Jesus of the Bible, you will be in hell forever and ever. It's very terrible. Jesus can do all these statements about hell. We have to come up with the terminology that we can kind of understand, but we can't even fathom how terrible it is. A lot of groups teach an annihilationism, which is a heresy, saying that we're just annihilating you. But see, God is a holy and just God, and sin has to be punished. Your sin will even be punished in hell for you. For all eternity, or the wrath was poured out on his son. It was a propitiation. He absorbed the wrath of God. He pleased the Father to do so. That our sins will be forgiven for those who trust him. Isaiah 44 6. You do not understand. But thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Christ is called the first and last, the Alpha and Omega. In Revelation and other places. And in Isaiah, Yahweh is called. So Jesus is God. Now look, the Trinity raises the dead. The Father in Acts 3.27 raises the Son. 1 Thessalonians 1.10. 1 
Jesus raises himself in John 20, uh, John 2, 19 to 21. I'm not reading these because we're almost out of time. The Spirit raises Jesus, Romans 8, 11, and then God raises Jesus, Acts 17, 31. You see the doctrine of the Trinity. Every person of the God that raises Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit is God. Remember in Acts 5, and Ananias and Sapphira was told, they have not lied to men, but they have lied to God by lying to the Holy Spirit, they said. Yeah. So remember, my friends, in, in Psalms 145 and Romans 8, 28, all things were given because we love God. We're called according to His purpose. If you go down that line, that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Psalms 145, 17, uh, 21 says that all who come to Him in truth, He will fulfill the desire of the Savior. My friends, go to Jesus. Remember Psalm 91, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the mind. The brother Moses is the <coughs> not here to see I am, which is a different of the message today. <laughs> Word upon your heart I am The one who even knew you before your birth Before you I am the foul of living water, risen son of man, the healer of the broken. And when you cry, I am your Savior and Redeemer, who bore the sin of man, the author and perfecter, beginning and the end. Your sorrow. Sorry.